It sounds like sounds like you're going to the bathroom. Oh gosh, I was just there. I know with the AC going. Oh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, this is becoming more professional. I get to see your beautiful face. Look at that, yeah. Woohoo! But I'm a pretty man. You are a pretty man, it's true. If anybody knows, Mike, when he nice shaved, wears a nice suit, puts out some cologne, he's a million bucks. Okay. Wrong answers only. What is the ideal camping environment? Go. I'd say uh, in the uh, Amazon uh, rainforest. Yeah, eh? That's a good one. That's a that's a lots of mosquitoes, anacondas, uh, poisonous uh, tarantulas, creatures. Yeah, I mean probably uh, stuff that we've never heard of. Or uh, probably some old mythical creature that still lives in the Amazon we don't know about. Exactly. Good answer. Good one, Mr. D. That's why uh, we have you. Because you're the brains. Uh, <laughs> but we'll get to some of the answers. Amber writes, in my living room with AC, with air conditioning. Alex.am says, if you like wildlife, pitch a tent in the Amazon jungle. Along the Amazon River, if you make it through, you have lots to talk about. So, there you go. You both have the same answer. Uh, I like the way he thinks. Uh, that's a she. She. Oh, she. Yes. I like the way she thinks. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a she. When Sony gets blue, hum. 40 degrees or below, cold and windy like Stenson Beach, California. Wearing clothing like it's winter. Ah. Uh -huh. Whoa. Yeah, Joseph writes, my wife says Ritz Carlton with spa, pool, and room service. No tent, just pool cabana. Yeah. And uh, probably uh, Tom Jones. Yeah, and Tom Jones. <laughs> it's not unusual. <laughs> I'm going to have Tom Jones in my head all day now. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, wait, honey, what do you say? Ah, oh, shit. Stupid debris. I'm gonna I'm gonna be drilling I'm gonna be drilling holes in the ceramics later this evening. <laughs> it's be like, unusual to be working at night. <laughs> oh man! All right, that doggy writes under a tree near the first hole at Trump International Golf Course. That's a good one. Interesting. Uh, Taylor Kane, Flat Perry, uh, sorry, Flat Prairie, forty above. Chrissy writes side of a mountain. J M X P Auntie J. Writes Islands in the Street. Bruno writes Kingston Penitentiary. Uh, Penite oh, I can't speak today. Penite you Kingston didn't sleep much last night, did you? No, I didn't. Kingston Prison. Yeah. Was it Kingston Prison? Kingston Prison. Jamie writes Set up the at the edge of a raging forest fire. You won't be cold. Only challenged is if the wind changes. That's true. Mm -hmm. Rebecca Zimmerman writes In a Hotel. SBEs writes Monster Truck Rally. Nikki writes a cornfield. Karen Francis writes hotel room. Deborah writes a rocky cliff. High grader writes Hastings Street, Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one. Um, I only knew about Hastings uh, since like two weeks ago. Yeah. I never knew where Hastings was. But, there you yeah. go. Meredith writes uh, cuddling with Crocs in the Bayou. David writes, yeah, David writes a humid swamp. John writes in a volcano crater. Kevin writes downtown Seattle. And I know it's a wrong answer, but if anybody, you know, if you've been paying attention to the news and um, and stuff going on, there's a big homeless problems in a lot of the uh, Democratic states and not and not not just the Democratic states, but general. But a lot of the states in the Dem a lot of the states in the United States, the Democratic states that passed a lot of reform and change bills and stuff like San Francisco is really bad. I think Seattle has a problem with homelessness and not just homelessness. LA like has a problem. LA uh, drugs, but, like really, really bad drug problem in the streets. And, and there's videos and stuff everywhere about it. And it, it's so sad. It's so sad. Anyways, that, that's a, that's a side, that's a 
sidebar, but um, we'll, we'll finish with some more. Grandpa, Grandpa writes. Uh, well, he doesn't write. He shows a GIF of uh, Yuppie from the Montreal Canadiens at the Bell Center waving. So, I mean, imagine camping at the Bell Center. Well, you won't. Well, you won't have to worry about mosquitoes. You won't have to worry about mosquitoes. Michael Roberti, who's going to be, he's going to be one of our guests. Who was one of our guests? Uh, according to the Lord of the Rings, anywhere leaning up to and on a volcano. Bonus points for large spiders. Some really good ones. There's a bunch of them, but we won't go into them. In between interviews, I had a cancellation this morning. I had one cancellation and one interview. I interviewed a super duper awesome person named uh, uh, Principal Zyker. Uh, he was really cool. So everyone's going to end up checking out his episode eventually. Uh, very inspirational guy. Uh, you would have liked him. And uh, the other person had an emergency and canceled. And so we'll reschedule that. And then later tonight, we have another one, you and I, with the one and only flag football legend, McGill broadcaster, Concordia Brent? alumni, Brent, Mr. Botkin. Oh. Tonight, uh-huh. you and I. Did I send you All the link? All right. Uh, I think so. Yes, I have to double check, but yeah, you double check. I'm pretty sure you sent. Although, it. although I am, I am working tonight. I'm gonna try to get home as soon as possible. It may, I may message you and him, and and uh, just ask if we could push it, maybe 15 minutes or something. Anyway, we'll see yeah, what happens. Sure. We should be all fine. But that's that's tonight. So, um, and that episode will probably come out later on in the year. But uh, that's a local. It's a Montreal local. He's involved in uh, all kinds of sports and journalism and education and he's doing his degree in teaching and he's all over the place so uh he's gonna better you better tell me some funny stories or else he's fired <laughs> he's out of the family he's out of the family so uh one of the things we could talk about which which i wanted to bring up to you on the phone the other day but i haven't had two minutes was um was linkedin right okay. so i haven't i mean i used linkedin very briefly years ago and then i never took it seriously and it was only this summer that I uh, made my profile again, and I started taking it a little bit more seriously. And I told you about it, so I started making more connections with people that that I, I've known over the years. When you know, it's a, it's a progress because you have to find people, and it comes naturally. And you don't want to, you can't just follow a thousand people in one shot. But so I thought about it, and I started looking around for uh, future endeavors, part time work, extra, you know, uh, stuff like that, and. One of the things that I see a lot of people are always talking about, like career transitions, job interviews, you know, things to do, things not to say, things to say, uh, like basically, basically tips. So I think we could talk about that a little bit because you've had a bunch of interviews. I haven't had, you've had a lot of interviews. I haven't had a lot of interviews. I, I, it's been a long time. Like I had one recently with, uh, with a huge, um, one of the largest uh, insurance companies in North America. And I'm due for a round two with them, I think, soon. But just because, because I wanted to try and, and see what's going on outside of the public realm. And so having said that, one of the things I thought we could talk about is like, since a lot of the interviews now are being done through Zoom, right? Like what we're doing now. Yeah. Like, what are what are some things you need to do when you're on Zoom? For uh, interviews? Like dress wise, like what do you wear? What do you present? Should you Should you like crawl out of bed and have the interview like what are some tips you think i might have done one or two zoom interviews it's not too too like i haven't done too many yeah usually what i would like to do and this is like little ways to i find can make yourself look better you don't have to dress up as long as like you're dressed up from like the top up uh try to find like a nice place so you're saying wear no pants uh, I, I would wear pads, but I was probably like in my PJs, but I would have like a blazer or something. A blazer and, and, and PJ pants. And PJs or something. Okay. So, I mean, it's like, you don't really want to see me standing up because yeah. it would just look weird. It scared me. I would scare myself. But, <laughs> but I find another way that you can actually, or actually once what I did, um, I was really busy and the interview was like in 10 minutes and I couldn't dress up fast enough. So what I did I just put the camera like high enough from like my neck up, yeah. So you can see everything. So if you're ever like in a like in a very tight spot or uh, you're you know you don't know what to do, just try to zoom in from like your neck up and just you know try to look presentable. Or wear a clean T-shirt, right? At least. 
yeah type of thing like you don't have mustard on it like what were you doing i was just eating my sub and uh, it's all leaking on me it's like it's part of part of the mustard stains <laughs> you probably got like ketchup and mustard on your mouth too you're like uh so uh you want to work at the ritz carlton looking yeah. like that yeah what else but i would say another thing too like they're probably going to ask you a lot of questions. I mean, especially over like the last 10 years, I've noticed they've, they'll ask you stuff that really has nothing to do with your, like your experience sometimes. Like, you know, uh, what do you do with your, uh, with like your, your friends? Um, like your interest, you know, your, your interest. Uh, how would you sum up your, 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 your past experience? Not, not including like your career, but you know, like your friends, how would they uh, define you? which I, I understand from their point of view, they want to know what type of person you are, but sometimes they would tell you stuff like, well, you know, how's your, your, your relation with your, your sister or something. I've, I've had questions like that. Really? It's like, yeah, that that's nothing to do with the job interview, but generally speaking, there's a lot of questions. Generally speaking, just make yourself look like you're an ambitious guy. You're reliable. Uh, you want the job and you're a good asset. Those three things you should be good. I, I, I mean, even if you'd go to a job interview face to face, it would be kind of like the same thing. But now I find there's more talking involved. That's the difference I've seen yeah. from when I first started going to interviews. More talking, more answering questions. More answering questions, yeah. I ask because, I mean, I've been speaking to a lot of people. I've actually talked to a couple of people on LinkedIn and, and on Twitter and then applying for some jobs. Actually, I've turned down a couple of jobs that uh, got offered because they were, they were there, you know, like. Hey, nice. Thanks for the job offer, but I, I can't set the bar lower than what I'm doing now. It has to be higher. So, and that's not a, that's not a knock on, on jobs and things that people are offered. It's just that salary wise or, uh, hour wise or location or travel or distance or, you know, you could stomach yeah, you in your life too. Yeah. Like, uh, if you got a mortgage and things like that, like you, you can't do $20 an hour jobs. It just doesn't work like that. Right. So. So I've been thinking about it a lot and people, and I've talked to some people and I thought you'd be good to talk about it with. I remember a story and I, I never forgot this. And I actually told the interviewer this in the, in the questionnaire and I'm sure they're going to ask me about it soon. When I, when I was, the, when I went to work for the private school, mm -hmm. uh, in Montreal near us, not before I got my teaching degree, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I got referred by a friend and then I went there, uh, it had an interview. The interview was like 15 minutes. And the person interviewing me was a fantastic woman. Amazing person. I asked, I don't even remember the question she asked. She just asked about, you know, my experience and stuff. She's like, so you attend this school? Yeah. And you worked at this job? Yeah. And you do this? Yeah. Uh, what are your interests? Uh, whatever I said at the time, like hockey or whatever the case may be. And she's like, do you have any questions for me? And I was like, nope. <laughs> and I, I didn't talk much at all. And I answered questions like one word answers. Granted, I was nervous because I needed the job and I thought I, I thought I was just going to get it. Honestly, I didn't, I didn't expect like a whole blown interview. So, so then she, you know, she called up my, my buddy at the time and was like, so this guy, he's like, he's, you know, stiff and he didn't answer the questions well. He like, he's, he didn't interview very well. He was terrible. <laughs> he's terrible. And he goes, yeah, he's a little nervous. Uh, he just thinks he's gonna work out, but he's he's great. He's got the experience, and he's a great person, and he would be phenomenal. So I got I got the job, and then three months into the job, we're talking about it, and we were at, and now at this point, like I'm comfortable. Like she knows my personality. I talk a lot. Like I, I have no problems talking to people now. Like compared to then, I was how old was I? Twenty? I don't know, twenty one, something like that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> she says to me. We were three of us plus her, so four of us in the room in her office. And she says, "Oh, talking about job interviews, like she, Mike, you sucked at the interview. Like you're terrible. You're probably the worst person I've interviewed ever." And I'm like, "Yeah, I uh, I see that." I'm like, and she's like, "These are the things you need to do better. Don't forget them." She's like, "Know the job, so know what you're gonna generally know what kind of questions you're gonna you're gonna answer. Relax." Don't be nervous. She's like, worst case, you don't get the job. Like, it doesn't matter when someone says no to you. Just, just go, just go do, just go do the interview, right? You're selling yourself. You have nothing to lose. Just be honest. Don't make up stuff. Don't pretend to be somebody you're not. 
she's like obviously be professional and stuff she says and uh like loosen up a bit just answer the questions like as if you're having a chat with us right now like she's like you need to do that because going forward in the future you're gonna ask people are gonna ask questions and you're gonna have to answer so I, I did, I, I took those points and then when I, I applied to school boards and stuff, I got interviewed by principals and different people. And then I turned that into having a bad habit of taking control over interviews. Like I, I will just talk and, and, and then ask them questions. So, I mean, that's not for every job, but I, I remember that experience and I, and I, and I had that in my head. And then when I had to fill out the questionnaire for the recent job interview, I wrote that and then I got an email back saying, blah, 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 blah. Like we're really interested in talking to you again. So some things to do, you know, like don't do some things to do, wear clean clothes, you know, don't talk about your dating experience. <laughs> like don't talk about like uh, inappropriate things. Don't, I mean, these are standard procedure, but some people really don't know, especially, I, I, I don't want to suspicion you're young, but maybe you're shy when you're coming out of school or you're young or I did work at Wendy's for a day. Did, did you know that? Yeah, I remember you, you, you walked in there and you're like, this is not for me. Well, I did. Like, and you just walked out. I did. I did one shift. I did one shift. And I said to them specifically, and I was what, 16? It was high school. And I was like, I want, I'll, I'm going to do the job. No problem. I want the job, but I only want to do manual labor and cleaning. I want to take out the garbage, shovel the snow, do the garbages, wash the tables unload trucks, do all that stuff. No problem. I want to do nothing with food, no grill, no nothing. I don't even care if I work 10 hours a week. It was just to get my, my feet wet. And, and I was already used to doing snow removal and, and, and heavy construction and stuff. So, and what happens? I go Monday, Wednesday's my first shift. Wednesday I show up, Mike, you're doing the grill. I'm like, that's not what they told me. Like you're doing the grill. Uh, and I had to shave my beard for the job, right? I walked in, I did it, walked out. And the next day, uh, my next shift, I walked in right before my shift. Like I was 16. What did I know? And I was like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> and they're like, why? I'm like, it's not for me. And I said, I, and I, I, I think I also made up that my teacher was upset that I was uh, tired the next day in class or whatever, but it was, it was a dumb excuse. I, I told them like, I didn't want to cook food. I just wanted to do the physical aspect of the job. And they, and you guys, you lied to me. They're like, well, no, you, we told you. I'm like, no, I told you and you said yes. And this is, and then I show up and it's, I got, I want an A and I got X. Granted, I'm 16. I should shut up and take the job. But at the same time, I, I, I'm not like that. I just kind of was like, I want to get what I was expecting. I'm not asking for 10, $20 million, just asking for the proper responsibilities that suit me. Having said that, it was funny. You're always going to find jobs like that. I mean, even like my last job when I was doing painting, that was the same thing. Uh, I mean, from what I was told, what was the result was two different things. I mean, from the pay to my responsibilities to uh, even the people I was working with, most of them anyway. Like the boss that hired me, he basically lied about everything. No, oh, man. Everything. Yeah. It's not like, well, you know, half of it was right. Basically, it was all the responsibilities on you. The boss just wanted to get paid and he didn't want to pay me. So that didn't last long. And you're going to find jobs like that. I don't care where you are. You're going to find a lot of low lives, uh, a lot of low life uh, bosses out there. Yeah. And I had a, I had a job where they promised me X salary and I got, you know, Y salary. And then you go see them and say, Hey, it's been two weeks. I got paid, but I'm missing a little bit of money in my paycheck. No, your salary is this, I don't know, whatever, 12 bucks an hour at the time. And I was promised 14 or, you know, and it's like, and you can you couldn't walk out of the job because you really needed it because you're going to school and you're going to pay your schooling. So sometimes you get screwed and you suck it up. Other times you say, screw this. I, I'm walking out. I, th I think an important thing too is like, don't burn bridges. Like just because they screwed you over, you got upset. Depends what they do. But like if they lied to you or they swindled you or they just wasn't a, it wasn't a good situation Just say, you know what? Thanks. We'll part ways for mutual agree to, go our separate ways and that's it and then uh because you never know like people also change and progress and end up in other roles and things like that but um <laughs> well, anyway uh the last bridge i burnt trust me man uh he's not gonna uh throw a rope to me well i would have burned water, that bridge or, too. or a, a life-saving uh raft that's for sure i mean at one point we were screaming at each other yeah 
That's how, that's how bad it got. Yeah, listen, so. when you told me about that job, I would have burnt that bridge too. Like, there's some lines you don't cross, and if they cross it, I'm sorry. Like, you know, uh, I'll 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 tell you all the way, the way it is. But um, yeah. uh, but uh, what uh, in person interviews? Uh, I used to play with a pen a lot or have something in my hand because I'm fidgety. I'm better. Yeah, I, used to, I used to do that too. I still do it actually. Yeah, but I'm better now. Now I just do it for like, just for the sake of, you know, my. Actually, it's good for uh, when your wrists and stuff hurt to move your joints. But when I was younger, it was like it was like almost like a a, a twitch, like a, a or a nervous twitch. So I'd keep it so that like you know don't keep anything in your hands. Like keep your hands out of your pocket generally. Don't put your hands in your pocket. I find I find that's a little strange. Uh, what are you laughing about? <laughs> I don't know because it just reminds me of like high school or. Uh, I, I used to hear people say that, get your hands out of your pockets here. Get your hands out of your pants or stuff. I've, I've had teachers and other people say that to other kids. <laughs> get your hands out of your pants. <laughs> well, I, got, I know this is, this, is what's, this is like way back in the day. I, I have to say this story. And you want to talk about, you know, uh, having your hands out of your pockets or having your hands out of your pants. <laughs> I don't know what this guy was doing, but – his hands was not even in his pants. Like it was around his butt crack and everyone was looking at him like, why is his hands around his butt crack? And I don't know. He was like playing around with it. And there was three of us looking at him like, what, why is his hands on there? I'm like, God, I hope he's not going to pull it out, man. Cause I'm running. <laughs> oh man. Remember he's, he's there for like a half hour. He's just, he's just scratching his ass. And he's putting his hands, in his butt crack. It was like, Oh man. Oh, and actually this happened. This happened when I was a kid. And this yeah. happened not too long ago when I was a pure later. And this is a 45 year old guy. Yeah. I don't know. There's people all around the whole warehouse. This guy, I, I didn't see this, but the other guy told me the story where he had his hands up his butt crack. And then next thing you know, he pulls it out and then he just smells his finger. Uh, <laughs> I was like, this is man. a 45 year old man. I was like, Jesus Christ. There's people everywhere. There's managers, there's everything. He didn't care. Now, now I'm now I'm worried about if I ever have to go get some food <laughs> or packages or pure later packages. There is a video, yeah, pure later packages. There is a video of this woman working at Dunkin' Donuts years ago on the internet. I don't. It's been a long time since I've seen it, and she was and she was like readjusting herself, and she had her hands in her pants, and then she was scratching herself at her butt, and, and then she was <laughs> grabbing the donuts while gloves on and giving it to customers. And it, it was like I think she got fired too, but. Just there's just some things you don't do. That's that's after you get hired. Don't don't do that during an interview, right? <laughs> don't do that at home. Never mind when you're working. <laughs> oh jeez. I don't know if you remember. Remember when I used to do some of my uh, presentations at school? Yeah. I used to stand in front of the class. I remember people used to make fun of me because I'd always have my hand in my pocket or my thumb on the ledge of my pants. I know people can't yeah. see me, but holding the front of my pants with my hand down, so it kind of looked like I was holding my crotch, but I wasn't. And, and it's just. They used to laugh at me, and I, I it was a nervous thing. Like I had to find a body position to, to kind of stand and hold, yeah. especially French it oral. Look awkward, yeah, especially, yeah, yeah. yeah, especially French oral presentations. They used to make fun of me for that stuff, but yeah, don't do that either. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, look, uh, compared to some of the other guys in French class, that was nothing. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I some of our uh, old uh, classmates. Well, you know, had great stories. I never remember that story, but the other stories I remember is uh, a lot more hilarious. Yeah. Just remember when you're in a class, don't kick a volleyball around in the classroom and the teacher's not there and break the cross on the wall. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and another thing, uh, if you're going to try to be a sneaky little uh, bandit and uh, if you have, if, uh, let's say, for example, there's a car that has a lot of dust on it. If you want him to figure out, if you want him to wonder who wrote uh, something bad in his car, uh, remember how to spell, you know? Because yeah. uh, we had one guy there, he forgot how to spell. And that was funny. So uh, the whole, so the whole uh, investigation was, who was the guy that, that wrote something that didn't know how to spell? Who wrote loser on my car and spelt it wrong? Louser. <laughs> Louser. <laughs> Louser. <laughs> <He's> Louser. <laughs> oh, man. That was a funny thing, too. He's like, if for whatever reason, he knew who it was. Oh, he knew. He so knew. our teacher the knew. He, he went up, and it was like something from like a movie because his back was turned to us, so no one could see the word when he was writing it on the board. Yeah. Till he moved out of the way, and we're all looking at this. I was like, we know that's not how to spell loser. That's a that's a good tip too for for job interviews. Like, don't write on your boss's or your interviewer's car 
profanity or anything bad because then they're going to find out too. And there's even worse case scenarios worst case on scenario. a snowy day. Oh, yeah. I could walk on your, uh, on your, uh, on, on the uh, hood of your car and, uh, yeah. Relieve oh. himself. I've, I've heard many stories like that. Oh, I've seen, I've, I've heard stories. I know people that w- went to take a leak before the interview on the side of a building or something and then saw people or somebody saw them and then they went for the job interview and it was the same person that's interviewing that saw them. Of course, they didn't get the job, right? Because they're like, oh, you're peeing in public. So you got you to gotta really be conscious of what you're doing, especially that day. Like if you're going for that interview or you're Zooming for the interview, like make sure it's about that. You don't have nothing else bothering you going on. Just be in that frame of mind and, and don't be like, don't be a slob. Don't be lazy about it. Don't unless, unless you really don't want the job. But even then, like, don't be disrespectful because... I think maybe that that's a that's a big one is don't be disrespectful either way. Even if you're terrible at the interview, or if you're not terrible at the interview, if you don't want the job or do you want the job, or don't even show up. If you don't want the job, they just don't show up. Well, uh, also like case. it depends. Again, it's one of those things where like you don't want to burn bridges with people. So then, you, if you have the day of the interview and you just don't show up and don't tell them, you're wasting their time. So that's not yeah. good. And I know like when you're younger, like people do that, like. I actually, I've had a couple of job interviews where like, I just, I thought we're wasting my time in the end and I got a better opportunity and I just didn't show up to, but they were like, they're not high end jobs or professional jobs. But in return, in, in saying that probably should have contacted them and say, you know what, look, I'm not coming. It's not for me. I remember for a door job in, uh, somewhere in Montreal, I, I, I had a job interview and, um, then they rescheduled on me twice. And then the, for the third time, I just didn't show up because I was fed up, but. Anyways, that's another that's another story. But going forward, we're talking. I'm talking about this because there's so many people in career transitions right now. People like people I talk to, people I know that left education. There's a lot of people that are in career transitions, and the pandemic has made them think, "I need a change." And and so there's a lot of there's a lot of that. And then the other thing is, when you're talking in an interview, don't bash people or talk poorly about other people or do you know like if you're currently employed at wendy's don't go to mcdonald's and be like i hate wendy's i'm coming over here like don't do that right i i think that that speaks for itself no uh i I would say i mean that's generally how i uh approach people uh for example let's say you just don't like someone and that's his friend or somehow he know the person. I'll basically say, you know, me and him, we just, uh, we don't mix well. That's it. Yeah. I don't say, even though personally, I think that guy is, uh, me and him, we just don't get along. I don't know, a uh, product I had, whatever is not for me. This, I mean, I'm not insulting anybody, but personally, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, this is great when really it's not for me or this person's not for me or this job is not for me or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Well, be honest with yourself and be honest with people, but at the same time, be professional about how you're being honest. And, um, you know, that's it. That's the story. Also too, with today, uh, like you have to be careful what you say, because like the PC culture is everywhere. I mean, I, I heard about it about five, six years ago, but now it's prevalent. Like it's almost everywhere. Yeah. Which I've noticed it's, now, now it's really taking a, a a toll now. Even when it comes to jobs, it's like you got to be you got to really be careful what you say, even though it has nothing to do with the job, or you're not insulting someone, or it could be one word, or it, it's like it's almost like you're walking on eggshells. I find now, if your environment you're working in is um, the culture is very strange to you, chances are you don't want to be there. If you don't fit yeah. in or you don't feel comfortable, chances are you don't want to be there. And that's a, that's a big thing. Uh, you know, a lot of the companies have cultures like that, but then again, you may have a, you might work in a garage at a mechanic shop and be like, this is the best thing ever. You know, like the other yeah. might go say, like he likes working in the garage because you work with great people. And that's the other thing is that when you get a job working hard is great, especially, and if the job sucks, it could be the best job ever because you're working with great people. Right. Or vice versa too. I yeah, you know, I mean, uh, maybe like, like the job is not great, but like the people are great. Yeah, it's the opposite. This is the best job you've ever had. This oh yes, this this exactly. Co-host, best job you've ever had. It doesn't yes. pay anything, but maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Let's uh Let's Feel add free. the po- let's end the podcast. What do you say, right. Mr. D? Yes. You want me to do it this time, or you? Oh, uh, no, uh, for sure. Um, you know, uh, thank all, thank you for uh, listening to us, to all our listeners. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, reach us at any of our platforms at uh, Google. If you put in a Google search, you can find us on <laughs> a lot of different engines. Ah, oh, oh, man, I'm oh, screwing up Mike, right all right, Mike, I'm going to do the segue out. And you're okay. going to listen to what I'm saying. And then the next time, you're going to use the same one. Okay. All right? Because your job's on the line here, okay? All right, your performance evaluation is coming up. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the Mr. Mike Podcast, Wrong Answers Only, with Mr. D and Mr. Mike, telling you to make sure you wear pants and a shirt at your job interview, whether you're in Zoom or in person. Follow us on all social media platforms, particularly Twitter, Instagram, Mr. Mike MTL, Wrong Answers MTL. And you can find our podcast wherever you get your podcasting platforms. Right? So you can Google us if you want. You can do that. You can go to Spotify. You can go to Apple. You can go to Google. You can go to Amazon Music. You can go to Heart Radio. You can go wherever you want. But we're available everywhere. Remember, subscribe, download, follow, rate, share it with your friends and family, tell your coworkers, tell the person on the corner of the street of the bus. Tell the person at the supermarket. Tell the person when you're changing your tires, you're getting a real change. Promote us and tune in to some of our future episodes with interviews with special guests. How was that? That was good. That was a lot, but that was good. That was a lot. We don't have to do all that, but it's a spiel. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Next time.